Okay, I'm lazy right now, and I've filmed like three videos today, so we're sitting. Okay, it's been a long week. Um, yeah, as always, my monthly TBR always seems to be a very popular video. I'm not totally sure why. Um, but this is my game plan for October. I am trying to read a little bit more of my darker books, just because the time of year with anything spooky or ghosts or necromancy or goblin-y or anything like that, um, I'm covering this month. So, well, not only exclusively this month, you get the point. So, um, I'm being overly ambitious in the month of October. Um, I still do have one book from my September TBR, um, that I haven't started yet. So I want to fold that into this month too as well. Um, but I think I can do it. Um, we have, uh, Thanksgiving a long weekend in October as well. And none of them are super ginormous the way I had in September. So hopefully this all goes as planned. So starting off, I think my nonfiction of the month is going to be Know My Name by Chanel Miller. I have been, um, you know, we only knew about it for, I think, like three weeks before the actual release, but I have been very, very interested in reading um, her memoir. She was the victim in the Rock, Rock Turner case um, on Stanford campus, and, you know, she had that insane, um, just that impact statement that was read, like, in Congress has been translated, like, so many different times to so many different languages. Um, and I want to know more about her and less convicted rapist Brock Turner. I want to know more about the woman who survived it and is going to continue to survive and thrive and be a good, impactful, useful human being to society, unlike him. So, yeah. So one of the books I picked up in September from Value Village, actually, was House of Furies by Madeline Rue. I know they did a cover change, um, but this is just a genre I don't normally touch. My friend Melanie wanted me to read it a few times, so when I saw it, I decided to pick it up. I know it's supposed to be um, scary and spooky. Louisa Dighton has nowhere to go. Alone and afraid, she has just fled brutal English boarding school where punishment was the lesson of the day. When she meets an old woman who offers her employment as a maid at the boarding house, Louisa thinks she's been saved. But soon after the arrival at the Cold Thistle house, Louisa begins to realize that the house mysterious owner, Mr. Morningside, is providing um, much more than lodging for his guests. Far from a place of rest, the house is a place of judgment, and Mr. Morningside and his staff are meant to execute their own brand of dark justice on those who's past, um, on those who are past being saved. Um, that sounds like it could be potentially really cool. Probably a movie adaptation of that is not something I would watch personally because I'm afraid of everything, but I feel like book-wise, this is something I could maybe read. So hopefully I will read it and enjoy it. Um, a second book that I also picked up at Value Village, The Loneliest Girl in the Universe by Lauren James. I remember this being blurbed in a conference session, actually a few of them, um, before it had come out. Um, and I heard really not much about it since. Um, it's got nice, like, bluey, purpley under dress jacket with the pink writing, which is really cool. Um, so I think that she's the daughter of an astronaut, um, Romy. Um, so she's in space and she's been trying to send messages to her therapist on earth and then it comes out that the messages they think are being like intercepted, um, or there's an alien or something like that. I remember vaguely as I'm talking about it in a conference session, but yeah, so the few people that I know have read it seem to have really liked it, but I know it's not, it seems to be hit or miss on online, but it was pretty cheap pickup and I actually really like this cover. So hopefully I enjoy it. Okay. But yeah, so I picked up Serpent of Death. It's got witches and witch hunters. October is like peak season for me to read this. I have to read it. And I've heard an absolute praise, like nothing but positive things um, from people who read this book. And they've announced the sequel title already. A witch and a witch hunter bound in holy matrimony. There's only one way such a history could end, a stake and a match. That sounds like Thanksgiving dinners would be amazing. Like entertaining to no end. So... Yeah, I'm really excited about that. It's a big size book. It's over 500 pages. Um, but like I said, hearing a lot of positive things. Watson, could you stop snoring? Why are you snoring? Um, I'm also going to be picking up Capturing the Devil by Carrie Maniscalco. This is the final book in the Stalking Jack the Ripper series. Um, I had to go through Hell and High Water to get Indigo to freaking ship it, um, despite the fact that I pre-ordered it. But uh, yeah, I have it. It is the last book in the Stalking Jack the Ripper series. I know it's supposed to be in Chicago. I think H.H. H. Holmes because of the World Fair and everything like that, um, which makes me very interested because I've been falling down that hole of watching those like weird like infographics or like BuzzFeed videos about certain like serial killers. And H.H. H. Holmes is just a famous one that always comes up. So yeah, I hope I love this, the ending of this series, and I will have to keep watching for Maniscalco. I know she's got a book set in Italy with witches, I think, supposed to come out next year. Um, so yeah, but I'm very excited about this. Why are you snoring? 
Oh, <laughs> you're wagging your tail. I'm also very curiously going to pick up A Memory Called Empire by Arkady Mar 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 Martini? Martini? I just know that this is a big sci-fi opera and there's a female-female romance in it. So I am so here for that. I also found out randomly online, I think it was this author, that she's also married to um, the author who wrote Strange Grace that I read at the beginning of the year. I think this is her. I'm trying to remember what the author's name was. Anyways, just look up Strange Grace, or sorry, not Strange Grace, Strange Practice. Um, yeah, a lo uh, layered, nuanced, and striking, uh, and startlingly imaginative, A Memory Called Empire is a sprawling space opera debut that puts a rare new stamp on the genre. Space operas can be total hit or miss for me. So I got it from the library. Hopefully I, I like it. The cover is, like, intense. I like the big-ass, like, throne. Like, that's a throne. Um, and yeah, so I think I'm going to read this earlier on in the month, especially. I'm just really excited about this. I have owned The Psychology of Time Travel since May. Yeah, I think May. Um, I've wanted to read it, like, every month, and I just haven't gotten to it. So I'm putting it officially on the TBR. <laughs> I, this is another time travel that my friend read, and she would said that there's a female-female romance in it, which is always great. Always getting that rep. Um... Time travel is just something I always really enjoy, but especially during the same sort of seasons that I would read historical fictions. I seem to really enjoy that sort of stuff. So hopefully I love it. Love it. I love the cover of this, though, for real. I don't know what exactly, why, because it can't. it's kind of simple, but the colors and everything, yeah, just big here for the cover, for sure. If you can hear Watson snoring, I'm sorry. I've asked him to stop, and he won't. He just stares at me and wags his tail and thinks it's freaking hilarious. Stop snoring. Stop snoring. Yeah, tail wags. So actually, for the TBR and Beyond group, I am going to be picking up Wilder Girls by Rory Power. They told us to wait and stay alive. This is supposed to be, I think, like female Lord of the Flies, essentially, um, with some dystopians. I love this cover. It's so insanely pretty. It's just, yes. Big ol' yes. Um, people seem to either love it or hate it, but it is blurbed by authors uh, other than Jeff Vandermeer from Annihilation. I haven't read any of his stuff, but I read Emily Cervantes' This Mortal Coil, which seemed, seemed to be another one that people loved or hate. I really liked it. Claire Legrand, an author I've really liked. And Don Kurtigic, which is another author I really enjoyed, um, Teeth in the Mist. And other than the, than the fact that they put this stupid, unpeelable sticker on the back, um, I am really, really excited about this. I love the, it came in the indigo box with a uh, book plate um, and a net, and I just like the uh, blue, or sorry, the green and the rose gold. It's so pretty to get. Another book that I had to fight with indigo to get, despite the fact that I freaking pre-ordered it, was Gideon the Ninth by Timson Moore. I am so freaking excited to read this. It's lesbian. Oh, there's the sun. There it is. What's up, sis? Um, it is lesbian necromancy in space. I don't know what else you want. Someone else had said something like, basically, it's like a haunted castle, but set in space. And I was like, boy, those are some pretty amazing premises that you're pitching to me here. So I fought, and well, not fought. My local bookstore was nice enough, despite the fact that I pre-ordered it, to just give me the little copy that I had locally, because I pre-ordered it when it was on sale with bonus plum points. And they first run had sprayed edges, so I grabbed it. They told me to just return whenever I got the one that was mailed to me so I could keep my price, um, my, my sale price and my extra plum points. And then Ter Indigo had the balls to send it to me like three weeks after it was released, a pre-order. And they sent without the sprayed edges. So they stocked their store with books that hadn't yet been sold with the first run. And then the people who pre-ordered that had already given their money we're given second runs, apparently. And I just got a, yeah, sorry about that, from their customer service. Indigo has, like, kind of dropped the ball a lot recently in the past few months, so that would have pissed me off if I hadn't gotten this, because it's such a, such a big release. And the whole reason I pre-ordered was for the black sprayed edges. Thank God I got them. But, yeah, I'm so excited about this. I'm going to be really loud, so you stop snoring, maybe. <laughs> You're cute, but you're annoying sometimes. Yeah, tail wag again. I'm also going to catch up on some cat winters this month, so I am going to be picking up In the Shadow of the Blackbirds, which was gifted to me by my friend Melanie last Christmas, I think, as well as The Raven's Tale by Cat Winters, which is an Edgar Allan Poe-inspired story. Odd and True blew me away. It's such an underappreciated book. The cover design was also just stunning. So when I saw The Raven's Tale, I was like, oh sis gotta pick up and then there's like this wine red raspberry inside dust pages and then the under dust jacket again they did like the, almost the same thing with autumn true just different colors and like oh, 
Cat Winters has like amazing cover designs. Like whoever does that, like a million gold stars. I am just so excited. Ever, it's another author that seems to like everyone's hit or miss. Um, with their stuff, uh, they, they'll, they'll follow them to the, de to the end of the earth like me, or they don't like the stuff. So I am really excited about that. I've heard pretty positive things, actually, though, specifically about this one. Um, and my friend Melanie's been harassing me to read it, so I'm finally going to read them. I am hoping, as long as my copy gets to me on time, to immediately pick up 13 Doors, Wolves Behind the Mall by Laura Ruby. This book has already gotten a bunch of awards and nominations. Um, it comes out early October, I think it is. It sounds amazing. Um, I am first in line for the audiobook and first in line for a physical copy in our, our library system. Um, and I just hope I love it. Uh, it was a little bit higher price point in Canada, I believe, so I hadn't pre-ordered it yet. And there was no pre-order campaign either. I'm trying to remember what it was called, but it was like a, some middle grade with like, I don't know, adventuring or something like that. And I remember reading it and enjoying it. York? Was it York? Or am I crazy? Maybe it was York. Something like that. Um, yeah, but I'm pretty, pretty hyped for this one. I saw it in a couple of magazines. It's been nominated for a bunch of awards. So I am, the, the title of that alone is very peaking to me. The cover looks really, really cool. I'm also going to be picking up Swipe Right for Murder by Derek Millman. I tried his Scream All Night book last year. It just wasn't for me, but a lot of people seem to really like it. Um, Swipe Right for Murder is his James Patterson debut, um, James Patterson imprint debut. Um, everyone seems to be really liking it. It sounds like a bit of an FBI thriller um, in contemporary setting, which might be a bit more my speed. I'm hoping to also squeeze in The Proposal by Jasmine Guillory. Um, Gil Guillory? Guillory? I have to figure out how to say her name. Um, this is the sequel, or I think it's companion more, to um, The Wedding Date, which I didn't end up, uh, I didn't hate it. It didn't have uh, everything that I wanted the way, like, I, I don't know if anything's ever going to top the kiss quote for me by Helen Huang, but I actually really did enjoy the main female character. So I'm going to keep going along the series, hopefully, and I can keep enjoying them um, and just expanding my horizon more on romance genre. Yeah, so I'm really excited to give this... This popped up in my recommendations like really randomly and then I was like, I mean, I've read a book by this title before and it worked out pretty well, so why not? So I am picking up Rook by Sharon Cameron. I also love that there's a Mature Reads label. I've never seen that on a book before. I don't know, maybe it's, a, I don't know if that was the, the library that did it or the book company that did it. I don't know, we have some school, a lot in Alberta of schoolhouse public libraries, so they serve as dual school and public library. But in reality, all they do is they limit the content they have in the library, the public library, because they have a school kid. So it's really not a good system that's set up in the province, um, especially if you have to go into a school as a, an adult without children to access. It's just a very weird system. So I'm wondering if that's maybe who put the sticker on here, Mature Read, that it's not for, like, toddlers. I don't know. I, can't, I take big issue with schoolhouse public libraries. But, um, yeah, hopefully it worked really well. It's good. I know it's supposed to be, like, a dystopian East set in Paris. Um, the cover has intrigued me quite a bit. Um, and I read The Rook by Daniel O'Malley. I don't think it has anything relating to the topic, but it was just a good read for me. So hopefully this can, you know, be almost as good. I don't know if it can be as good, but hopefully it'll be. I mentioned in one of my past videos that there were a few series that I wanted to reread because the third book had come out this year. Um, so I'm going to try and do that for the rest of these past last few months of 2019 so i'm going to be rereading Catherine arden series the bear and the nightingale the girl in the tower and the winter of the witch this i picked up secondhand at a bookstore even though it isn't like literally perfect perfect condition there's only like kind of scrubs in the corner which could have easily happened when you get the book mailed to you so i was so excited when i found this because again price point 37 dollars in canada is quite high and it just never went on sale or pre-order sale or anything like that but yeah, I feel like I remember a fair amount of them, but I really did enjoy this series. So I want to reread The Bear and the Nightingale because it has been a little while since I read that. And then um, I kind of remember how The Girl in the Tower ended, kind of not. Um, so I can read The Winter of the Witch and appreciate all the gloriousness that this series was. It was amazing. It was such a good debut series. And I'm following Catherine Arden's other stuff. I know she's a middle grade series. It's been expanded, I think, to four books, the Small Spaces series. Um, but hopefully I think she, I hope she comes back to YA slash adult stuff soon because I really, really enjoyed this series. It was, a, you know, random out of nowhere series that I just love. Just because I know it's going to hurt and I would rather just get it over with because I know it's going to hurt and then wait, I guess, to read his YA series that's still active. And then we have the Vampire series next coming out coming out next year. I'm going to read Dark Dawn by Che Kristoff. Um, people seem to be like, eh, 
like it's okay, or they're five starring it. However, the amount of people that I've my friend Muriel had said this, she's a big fan of the series. But like she had said, she's seen people like that are like meh about it, and they didn't realize that it was like a chosen one. The sun went away. They didn't realize it was a chosen one trope book, and I was like, how? How did you get through the first two books and not realize that Mia is a chosen one? Like, that doesn't make any... How in the world did you miss those giant signs of that? I don't, that doesn't make sense to me. Anyways, I'm really excited to read this. Um, and I'm hoping that they're going to release some sort of information. For a while, Jay Kristoff had, like, insinuated pretty heavily on Twitter that they were going to re-release the hardcovers of the UK covers. Um because people were selling them for astronomical um, rates, because they only made so few of them. Um, and he was saying, basically, it seemed like they were going to try and, like, release a box set of them with this, but then the news never came. So I don't know what's going on with that. I wish we would get some information on it. But at least I got the signed first edition, even in Canada, because he, uh, I don't think he's coming to Canada this tour at all. And he came once to Vancouver, and that's like $2,000 for me to travel down there to go to that, which I couldn't afford. So, yeah, going to read Dark Dawn. Hopefully it doesn't hurt a ton. Another series I want to reread because I got the last book finally. It's not, a, the last book came out, I think, like a year or two ago, so, but I just finally got it. So I'm going to be rereading uh, Catherine McGee's, um, I think it's her debut series, actually, The Thousandth Floor. Oh, it's prettier this way. I'll put them this way. So I had read The Thousandth Floor before, I think in 2017 or so. I really enjoyed it. It was a kind of a surprise read for me. I didn't know if I was going to like it or not. Um, and then I picked up The Dazzling Heights and The Towering Sky this year. So hopefully I will love it. I'm also finally going to put myself through reading The Fate of the Tearling by Erica Johan. So I reread book one earlier this year and reread book two last month, and I'm finally going to pick up The Fate of the Tearling. This is one that I had picked up finally. I had never actually read it before, so I reread the first few to make sure I understood everything. I know everyone doesn't seem to be a super big fan of how this series ended for the most part, um, but I also know that it says on her so Goodreads that uh, in a response to some fan that she's working on a fourth and a fifth book in the Tearling world. I don't know if it's going to be the same series or like another spinoff of a different character or something like that. I can't really know that yet, um, but I think that's just something to keep in mind. But I know this was pitched as like the thrilling conclusion or whatever it was. Um, yeah, the thrilling conclusion to a fantastic trilogy. So I'm assuming it's going to be in the same world with maybe spinoff characters or if someone has a kid or something like that. But hopefully I don't hate it and throw it across a room. I have been holding this back to read for Halloween time. Um, Nightmares by Jason Siegel and Kristen Miller. Um, they wrote Other Otherworld, which I read last year, I think it was, and I actually really enjoyed it. I know there's also illustrations, um, so hopefully I love it. It's a middle grade. It's a little bit older of a book, too, um, and there's some, like, like wild things in there. Hopefully middle grade, like, horror thriller seems to be, like, my limit for scary spooky stuff, so hopefully I enjoy it. Um, I picked up The Wren Hunt by Mary Watson at the library. For some reason, I thought it was a novella, but it's really definitely not, um, but it was at the library on display, so I ended up picking it up. I honestly don't know a ton about it. I remember when it came out reading the summer, I'd be like, that sounds kind of cool, and then forgetting about it. So my friend Haley recommended it to me, and hopefully I enjoy it. And the last book I have planned for this month was Salvation Day by Collie Wallace. Um, one of the authors who came into the TBR and Beyond group had mentioned that they were really excited for this to come out, that this the author was their friend, um, and that they really enjoyed it. And it seems to have like, pretty decent reviews, actually, on Goodreads. Um, and I hope... I like it. It's not super big read, too. A Dream of the Future, A Nightmare from the Path. Uh, Zara knew every detail of the plan. House of Wisdom, a massive explo explo explore a massive exploration vessel has been abandoned by the government on Earth a decade earlier, when a deadly virus broke out and killed nearly everyone on board in a matter of hours. But then the enigmatic cult leader who... Uh, who <laughs> But then the enigmatic cult leader she had followed since she was a child promised it could belong to her people if they were bold enough to take it. All they needed to do was kidnap Jeswinder Vahatcharya, I'm sorry, uh, the sole survivor of the tragedy and the last person whose genetic signature would allow entry into the spaceship. But Zara and her crew could not know what waited for them on the ship. A terrifying secret buried by the government, a threat to of all humanity that lay asleep alongside the orbiting dead, and then they woke it up. That sounds cool. Very, very cool. I've been apparently into, like, sci-fis this month, too. So, yeah. That is the game plan for this month. Hopefully I can finish it all. 
fingers crossed. Um, there's a couple books that I'm like, you know, any of the series, I'm A-OK if I start them and don't finish them. I can push those into the next month if I if I don't have enough time. But I do try, I, I try, I want to try and marathon them, uh, like, bam, 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 three days uh, in a row or so. So, yeah, that is the game plan. Uh, let me know in the comment section down below what you plan on reading this month. I'd love to know. Um, if you've read any of these and want me to know something about them before I go into them, definitely put that in the comment section down below. I will link all of these books, yes, in the description box down below. And I will also link all of my social media. If you follow me, I will follow you back.